In our first tutorial on Photoshop, we'll begin by discussing how to create a new document in Photoshop and what we can do with that document. So we can start by saying File New or take note of the shortcuts and all of the um, menus items up on top. You'll notice that there are shortcuts attached to those menu items. As you can see here, Control N, Command N, or Apple N on Mac. And these are very useful for you to start um, memorizing and getting used to uh, working with, especially for uh, very common uh, types of commands like creating a new document or saving a document, Control S, among others. But let's begin by creating a new document. And we, as we can see here, you can name that document whatever you like. In this case, it's just got the default untitled one. We have presets available for us, and as you can see here, there are a number of different ones, uh, letter and legal sizes, and as you might, um, as you can also notice, that these are reflected in uh, dimensions of inches, and the resolution is in pixels per inch. A couple of things that we have to uh, address about that in particular. You'll notice that there are also some sizes here which have very common web dimensions, as in web resolution, 640 by 480 being the lowest web resolution. And you can also recognize that these numbers are dealt with in pixels. The main reason for that is because whenever we're doing something for the screen, and what I mean by that is the computer screen in particular, you should always be setting your measurements in pixels and pixels per inch. In particular, use the resolution of 72 pixels per inch. As we're going to be discussing, a lot of what we're going to be doing is going to be um, oriented towards the web user. And if you were doing something for print, as we can see here in the standardized legal or letter size, you'll notice that things are in inches. Very common for print, pixels per inch. The resolution is set to 300. And the reason being is because when you're working with print, you generally want to have a higher resolution so that it will print much more accurately. On the other hand, when we're dealing with the web, as we can see here, 800 by 600, the resolution is always 72. The reason being is because when you're dealing with something on a computer screen, 72 pixels per inch is the maximum resolution you can get. Higher resolutions will produce much heavier files. There's no need to go higher than 72 if you're presenting something for the screen. So keep that in mind. Anytime you're working on a web project, set your dimensions to pixels per inch and the resolution always to 72. Anytime you're doing something for print, you can do a higher resolution and you can have your dimensions in inches as opposed to pixels. Another thing about the difference between print and the web is specifically related to color mode. On the web, anytime we're working with a projected screen like a computer screen or any other type of projection like a television or a film projection or anything like that, you should always work with RGB color. RGB stands for red, green, and blue. You'll notice, however, that if we were to look at the print sizes, here in legal it doesn't show much difference. But if you were to work with other sizes that are dealing with specifically uh, print versions, you'd notice that the color mode should be addressed to CMYK color. The main difference being is that CMYK colors are the colors that we'll use in print, and we always use CMYK in print. The main difference here is the simple fact that whatever you do see on screen is always going to be RGB. So, in other words, if you are producing something for print, just keep in mind that even if you set your color mode to CMYK color, what you're seeing on the screen is still RGB. So if you don't want to have any unsightly uh, surprises when you get your work back from the printer, be well aware that you should choose a Pantone color book or some other sort of swatch book that are available for you to choose your colors directly from a book. Reason being is because what you see on the book on the printed page is CMYK color. You enter in that information and whatever you see on the screen, even if it looks a little different, should be disregarded. It's the CMYK color from the book that you're looking for. However, as I mentioned, if you are dealing with the web, RGB color, 72 resolution pixels per inch, 
and your dimensions in pixels are what we need. Also, as we can see here, background contents can be whatever you want. Uh, white background, the background color which is defaulted inside of the toolbar, or a transparent background. Well, white is a default and that's what we're going to be using here. And as you can see, you can also choose different color profiles specifically related to different um, situations. Like if you're working with something on the screen, NTSC is the North American standard for uh, television. Uh, among other things, Apple or Adobe RGBs, Color Match RGB, Canons, um, whatever the case may be and whatever you're looking for. You can feel safe working with the working RGB, the defaulted, as you can see here. The pixel aspect ratio can be square, which is the defaulted and should be used, unless you're working with film and television or other elements, NTSC, PAL, which is more for the Asian and European markets, um, as you can see here. So square pixels are perfectly fine for us. Um, and if you were to say OK at this point, it would produce a blank screen for you. You'll notice that in your layers palette, it says background. Uh, that means you will not be able to move it around or do anything with it, as it says here, because it's locked. A background layer is always locked by default. I'll be showing you how you can change this a little bit later on. But for the moment, that's a little bit about building your basic document inside of Photoshop.